Hello everybody, this is Warrior Dan, and welcome back to another episode of What is the Point Of? The series where I review individual games and critique them based on what aspects I find particularly interesting or otherwise noteworthy to discuss, and I break the game down based on a number of criteria. Now normally when it comes to reviewing products in this What is the Point Of? series, I selectively choose to limit my coverage to only the games themselves and not any expansions or accompanying DLC of said games, but today I am broadening that perspective somewhat, as today we are taking a look at Killing Floor 2 Twisted Christmas, the 2018 winter holiday update for Killing Floor 2. Now, throughout this video, on your screen will be screen-captured footage from the PS4 version of the game mixed in with a little bit of PC gameplay as well. Given the pretty noticeable difference in quality, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to tell one from the other. Capture quality on console isn't quite as good as it is on my PC, but hey, it's always fun to experiment with new techniques. Also, I've been playing Killing Floor 2 quite a lot on my console lately because it's a fun pick-up-and-play game after a long day at work. I do like playing the Berserker class and running around with melee weapons, killing waves of zombie hordes. Killing Floor 2 is a co-op, wave-based horde mode FPS, where a group of up to six players team up to face wave after wave of undead abominations. With each round increasing the number and variety of enemy types before ultimately culminating in a boss battle in the final round. In between every round, players will have a brief cooldown period in which to purchase new weapons, apply weapon upgrades to their existing weapons, and also resupply on weapon ammo and armor. Killing Floor 2 implements a in-game class system where players via the main menu, before jumping into a new game, can change their class at any time with each class having its own distinct starting weapons and class perks. Over time, by using class-designated weapons in-game, you can level up your class, unlocking new additional class perks every couple levels. If you choose to buy a weapon belonging to another class, you can earn points to level up that other class through the frequent use of that weapon. So the game doesn't really restrict you to any particular weapon set, and openly encourages you to mix and match to find the weapons that best fit your personal playstyle as opposed to restricting certain weapons to only certain characters, aka classes. Killing Floor 2, just like its predecessor, the original Killing Floor, has gradually gained a positive reputation with its community for its commitment to regular seasonal updates, which generally contain a new map, several new weapons, and a new boss, usually for said map. Killing Floor 2 usually has two or three such major updates a year. One in the spring, or early summer, one in October in time for Halloween, and one in December, in advance of the holidays. The update we're talking about, as I'm sure you can guess, is the Holiday Update, referred to in-game as the Killing Floor 2 Twisted Christmas Update. Killing Floor 2, kind of like other class-based games like Team Fortress 2, connects their updates to a very loose narrative continuity, creating a rough lore driven by absurd humor as a fun means to give you some idea why you're doing what you're doing, as if you really needed one. Santa, in the events of last year's Twisted Christmas update, had his North Pole taken over by his immortal enemy, Krampus, and Santa suffered an embarrassing defeat by said Krampus and was left for dead. Now after an extensive bodybuilding regime, Santa is back and ready to take back his workshop from Krampus, before taking the fight to Krampus himself. Your goal in the Twisted Christmas update is to escort Santa's sleigh down a very long track and defend it from any naughty zombie elves that try to attack it. By remaining close in proximity to the sleigh, it will glide faster down the track as opposed to its default slower speed when neither the player nor his zombies are near it. This in nature is very similar to the original Payload game mode, initially popularized in Team Fortress 2, but in the case of Twisted Christmas, Killing Floor 2's adaption of the mode does have its own unique style. The sleigh's track is divided in several places, forcing you to run from area to area after successfully delivering a cart to one checkpoint. Successfully delivering the sleigh to the final checkpoint will end this objective and will transition the player to the final boss battle. The character model for the final boss, Krampus, is a holiday cosmetic remake of the Abomination, one of the existing bosses in Killing Floor 2. Likewise, the other AI minions also have similar festive redesigns, all being very well textured with appropriate holiday decorations but no meaningful new gameplay content here. Krampus, just from a gameplay perspective, plays out the same as prior to this update when he was simply the Abomination, a creature that uses melee weapons and spawns lesser AI minions that can explode when in close proximity to the player. When engaging with this enemy, your best bet is to keep your distance and attack from at range. Sadly, in the gameplay featured here, I unwittingly decided to choose the Berserker class, a class that unfortunately specializes in close range melee combat, so this specific fight didn't go very well for me. 
but I still found the map, the new Santa voice acting from Gary Busey, the actor from the Bad Santa films, for those who don't know him. All of it was quite enjoyable in my opinion. Killing Floor 2 Twisted Christmas also introduced a few new free weapons into the game, such as this useful new fire axe you'll see me playing with, so even if you're not personally into the new boss or the new map, you'll still find a few new things to give you sufficient reason to come back to the game if you already own it. For those of you that do not already own Killing Floor 2, 2018's Twisted Christmas update probably isn't going to be enough on its own to merit you buying the game. But when you view this update among the many other prior seasonal updates, all of whose content all remain available to play in-game year-round, you will likely find a wealth of enjoyable seasonal content to keep coming back to. As a personal fan of the Killing Floor franchise, I'll give this update a thumbs up and for those of you who enjoy casual co-op zombie horde mode games like Call of Duty Zombies, I do recommend giving Killing Floor 2, especially its seasonal content, a go. And plus, hey, Killing Floor 2's retail price is only $29.99 USD, whereas the full Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Zombies costs, what, $99? Yeah, you don't have to twist my arm which is the better Zombies price value. Anyway, this has been Warrior Dan, and you've been looking at Killing Floor 2 Twisted Christmas. This has been more of a first impression rather than a total review. Give this video a like, subscribe if you enjoyed this, and want to see more videos like this in the future. I've been pumping out what is the point of videos quite often lately, and I've been trying to get more into reviewing games and making that my primary focus. So if you like seeing game reviews here on the channel, they are here to stay. They've always been part of my identity on YouTube, and I'm trying to double down on that now more than ever. So that said, again, this is Warrior Dan signing out. Stay awesome, everybody, and peace out.